Discover the lost weapons of the Anunnaki gods, God, the Anunnaki, and secret technology in the Bible, a groundbreaking documentary that will change the way you see sacred history. Have you ever been curious to know what mysteries ancient texts hide? What if we told you that the story of humanity as recorded in the Bible could hide advanced technological secrets far beyond what modern science has so far been able to explain? Through this captivating documentary, we invite you on an incredible journey through time to explore the destructive technology of the Anunnaki gods and its connection to humanity's most sacred scriptures. Have you ever wondered how the miracles described in the Bible could have occurred with today's technology? From the flying spaceships of the gods, known as Vimanas, to weapons of unimaginable power, all of these may be rooted in a much deeper understanding of the universe than we have ever imagined. What is behind the Jacob's Ladder stories? Was it just a dream or an encounter with advanced transportation technology? And what might a capsule that does not consume in fire, as the burning bush was lit before Moses, look like through the eyes of a modern observer? Our documentary addresses these intriguing questions and more, challenging you to look beyond traditional interpretations. In the lost weapons of the Anunnaki gods, we will dive into the analysis of the UFO phenomenon mentioned in the Bible, proving that these divine apparitions could, in fact, be evidence of extraterrestrial technology or an advanced, long-forgotten civilization. We explore the fascinating hypothesis that the revered and feared gods of antiquity were nothing more than visitors from other worlds, equipped with technology far beyond what we know today. This documentary is more than just a presentation, it is an invitation to dialogue and discovery. We encourage you to ask your own questions and seek answers with us. How would these revelations change our understanding of history, religion, and human potential? Don't miss The Lost Weapons of the Anunnaki Gods, a documentary that will take you on a captivating journey through the unsolved mysteries of our past. Join us in our search for the truth as we uncover the hidden connections between God, the Anunnaki, and secret technology in the Bible. Are you ready to see beyond the veil and discover the true story of human civilization? When we read the Bible from a religious point of view, with the fear of the unknown and the feeling of guilt that has been imposed on us for 2,000 years by the church, we do not realize how many things written in it we could explain today with the help of technology and science. In ancient times, man knew what those strange objects were that moved the army of gods that colonized the earth and how harmful they were to humans. That's why they wrote so much about the technology of the gods and about the Vimana their spaceships with which they went around the earth. The Bible, being composed of ancient manuscripts, was interpreted by the popes for humanity in such a way as to cause fear, admiration, obedience due to the power with which the gods swung up and down over the heads of men to control them. If you are passionate about the UFO phenomenon, don't make an effort to look for them in who knows what science fiction books because there are dozens of them even in the Bible. And I will try to explain to you how God and his armies of warrior angels did neither miracles nor bigger scammers than we would today in front of a man who lived in the jungle. The thousands of appearances of God in his spaceships or the miracles performed by Moses or Gideon are in fact high-powered technological devices with which the multitude was controlled and with which the worship of Abraham's God was imposed. In the book of Genesis 28-11 it is written that, Jacob stayed in a place to sleep, and he dreamed that a ladder was resting on the ground, and the top was touching the sky, the angels of the Lord were ascending and descending on it. Then God appeared at the end of the stairs and spoke to him. Seriously? Well, if we follow the teachings of the church, we know that an angel is a spirit and I don't see why he would have needed a sacra on which to ascend and descend from heaven to earth when it would have been much simpler to flutter from his wings to terror than bothering to handle technological things. It's easy to make the herd believe in miracles where they are not by using unknown words in a snake-smelling voice, instead of telling them to close their eyes and read for themselves. This scam that Ayakov saw was in reality a flying machine, a type of helicopter that launched sacred so that the occupants of the flying vehicle could get down, not spirits that ran up and down between heaven and earth on hanging ladders in the air, under the watchful gaze of God, who gave them a note as they walked. Another situation in which a flying machine is described to us is when Moses reached Mount Horeb. Exodus 2-5, there the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire coming out of a pyre. Moses looked, and behold, the pyre was still a fire, 
and the pyre was not consumed at all, Moses said, I will return to see what this wonderful vision is and why the pyre is not consumed. The Lord saw that he was turning to see, and the Lord called him from the middle of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, do not come near this place. Take off your shoes because it is a holy place. You see, in this verse Moses is not afraid of God or fire because he wants to go and study the phenomenon. He wants to understand how it is possible for a pyre to put out endless fire. Only God stops him so that he does not understand very well what it is. If we were to see such a burning object nowadays that was on fire but not consumed, we would understand that it was a capsule that landed vertically and had the propulsion engine under it. Another powerful ship is described to us when God guides his people through the desert in a column of clouds, smoke, as it is narrated in Exodus 19 to 20. On one side it was smoke and darkness and on the other side light at night. And one group does not join the other group throughout the night. It's easy to imagine what this airplane type ship could be with the propulsion engine in the tail, smoke and darkness, and the well-lit cockpit in front. For this reason the two groups did not join each other. Poor Moses witnessed countless landings and takeoffs of God's ships. Many times he entered the spaceship to talk with God, to study projects of the things he had to build as they were presented to him by God in person. Exodus 25 to 40. See to do all this according to the project that he gave you I pointed to the mountain. God always warns Moses about his arrival in the spaceship on Mount Sinai, and the people had to be warned about these arrivals in order not to approach or even touch the foot of the mountain because there they would have met their death. Exodus 11-12 Tell the people to be ready for the day after tomorrow because the Lord will come down before the eyes for all the people to see him on Mount Sinai. Draw a boundary around the mountain to the people and tell them, be careful not to climb the mountain and touch anything from it, because whoever touches the mountain will die. And now I'm going to tell you how all the people witnessed the landing of God's giant spaceship. Exodus 16 verse 18, the third day when it was dawn there were thunder and lightning and a thick cloud on Mount Sinai and a very loud sound of trumpets. And the whole earth in the camp shook and Mount Sinai was still smoking and smoke rose from it like smoke from a furnace and the whole mountain shook violently. Many times when God landed with his spaceship, Moses went to wait for him to go inside and talk to him. Exodus 24 to 18, and Moses went up the mountain and entered the midst of the cloud. I can't understand how brainwashed you can be to listen to this nonsense on your knees, full of fear and humiliation. How the hell does a spirit come to earth with thunder, lightning, trumpet blasts, and clouds of smoke like the Challenger space shuttle taking off? How is it possible to say that you are faithful and that you know the Bible, but never have the curiosity to understand what is actually hidden behind these accounts interpreted by the populace as the Lord's miracles? Among the twelve tribes of Israel, the only ones who could do sacred service, the ancestor of today's services, were the Levites, those from the tribe of Levi whom the Lord had made a kind of priests. Why I say one way, you will see, because at that time the priests had a completely different purpose in officiating the holy rites. They built the tent for officiating the holy service in accordance with the project that God gave to Moses on the mountain. In order to enter the holy room where the Ark of Reconciliation was placed, the priests needed special clothes so that they would not be killed by the rays coming out of it. During antiquity, priests used long protective clothes when entering this room. Their description occupies almost half a chapter in the Bible, given the importance of the long dresses they had to wear when they approached the nail of the law. The tent was not only special because the Ark was there, a great technology of God, but also because the Lord's spaceship was parked there. In order not to make the people curious, they said that there was a holy service for the Lord and only the priests were allowed to enter this holy place of the Lord. In reality, this tent was the place where the revision of God's technology was done and where the flying vehicles with which the Lord and his angels walked above the people were parked. You see, it was the people who handled and knew all the secrets of the Lord. When the spaceship landed above the tent, the priests went out because they could no longer breathe because of the thick smoke it gave off. It is interesting this popish invention in which smoke is replaced by the word slava which normally means gratitude, praise, commemoration, not at all something that is like a murderous cloud that does not let you breathe. Finally, to deceive and inspire fear, the cloud of smoke became a cloud of glory that takes your breath away. 
Exodus 34 to 35, then a thick cloud covered the tent of meeting and the place was covered by the glory, smoke, of God. And Moses could not enter the tent because the cloud and the glory, smoke, of God had covered it. Or, when the priests left the holy place, a cloud filled the temple and the priests could not go out to the service because of the cloud because the glory, smoke, of God had filled the temple. And in Exodus 36 to 38 we see that the spaceship was parked there, when the cloud from the tent lifted then they set out on the road, and if it did not lift they did not leave either because during the entire journey the cloud stayed over the tent and at night the light was over he. Another strange phenomenon created also to put fear in your bones was the way God always spoke to the people in the clouds, but only if his ship was present in the Israelites' field. Nowadays you can talk from an airplane with the help of a speakerphone. When the cloud was not present in the field of the Jews, God spoke to them with the help of the ark or as the priests say the nail of the law, so that we do not understand what it is. A series of scientists built this Ark of Reconciliation respecting all the details that the Bible gives us. This device was covered with gold, which is one of the best electrical conductors, and performed several functions. It functioned as a transmission reception station, as a powerful conductor of electricity, but also as a sonar. For this reason the Levites needed special clothing to avoid electrocution. God tells Moses to warn his brother of the danger of death when he enters the room where the nail is. Leviticus 16-2 Tell your brother Aaron not to enter the holy place beyond the inner curtain, before the atonement cover that is on the peg, so that he does not die, because above the atonement cover I will appear in the cloud. The nail had a magical power for the Israelites. With the help of this object, the walls of the city of Jericho were destroyed because it generates sound waves. It works like a sonar, as I have already said, and without these infernal vibrations, the great and grandiose walls of the most powerful ancient city could not have been destroyed. The Lord's chosen did not do magic, nor were they helped by any boundless potency of God, but by his destructive technology. Another incredible and destructive weapon of God is presented to us when Aaron's sons were supposed to present the incest to the Lord, but they made a mistake and were killed by the Lord. Leviticus 10-2, a fire came out of the Lord and consumed them and they both died before God. This mysterious fire that came out of the gentleman is definitely a firearm, a rifle, a pistol, a machine gun, because a spirit, no matter how cunning it is, cannot throw fire at mortals. In one of Joshua's battles, titled in the Bible the Great Battle of Gibeon, started against the peoples who lived in the Promised Land, God helps the Israelites as usual with his destructive technology, Joshua 10 to 11. When they were fleeing from the children of Israel, the Lord threw some big stones from the sky on them as far as Ezekiah, and they perished. Those who died from hailstones were more than those killed by the children of Israel. In this verse the hail that comes from the sky cannot be interpreted as a stone rain because the rain is not described together with the stones and then it clearly tells us that the Lord threw stones from the sky. This makes us believe without a doubt that the gentleman used this time another deadly weapon unknown to us. But apart from the weapons known or unknown to us and the nail, the gentleman also had in his war arsenal the nuclear weapon, the one with which he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. The Bible does not speak of a clear decision to destroy Gomorrah, only that the bomb intended to destroy Sodom was so powerful that it also destroyed the other city on the shore of the Dead Sea. Indeed, Gomorrah is nominated only when it rains fire and brimstone over it. Exodus 23-24 When the sun rose above the earth, the Lord unleashed a rain of brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah. The Bible tells us that these two cities were destroyed by the Lord's will and it is difficult to believe that the atomic bomb was used to destroy them, but we have too many clues that make us sure that the Lord really used it. Only those who do not want to really think will refuse to believe such a thing. First of all, God delayed the destruction of the two cities so that he could save Lot and his family. Then, as we saw, God with his hand unleashed a rain of fire and brimstone on them, and then everything was a premeditated action. A long time before. As the Holocaust is described to us, this weapon not only destroyed the fortresses and their inhabitants, but also all the vegetation on the ground that never grew again. We cannot doubt because in Deuteronomy 22-23 we have the confirmation of the line of people that will follow, your children and the stranger who will come from a far country, 
Seeing the punishment of this earth and the diseases with which the Lord desolates it, seeing brimstone and salt and that the whole earth is dross so that it neither sows nor bears fruit and no blade of grass grows on it as after Sodom, Gomorrah, which the Lord destroyed in his anger. With these explanations in which fire and brimstone fell from the sky from the Lord, causing such wounds to the earth, we are not allowed not to admit that the Lord was very equipped with various weapons of mass destruction. Hundreds and hundreds of scientists who studied the soil near the Dead Sea came to the same conclusion. The radioactivity in the area is still very high today. The sand is made of glass in those areas. There is no vegetation even today. And the sea became a dead lake without a trace of life in it. Another flying car is described to us in minimal detail by Ezekiel. With the descriptions he made, scientists built the first capsule similar to the one that was sent to the moon. This capsule has the propulsion engine below it, it has wheels that rotate one inside the other, and the eyes that the prophet speaks of are the windows that are arranged around the ship like airplanes, and the angels who lead it were the pilots and the crew. The biblical characters who were transported through the air by various aircraft by God are Elijah, Enoch, Ezekiel, and the king of Tyre, who was even offered life in heaven, but he was too arrogant and lost it, they say. To me, it seems like an unprecedented act of courage and dignity because he is the only one who does not sell himself for the colorful gifts of the Lord. From these paragraphs, we can say that the Lord's flight technology is not completely unknown to us, just as some of the destructive weapons that the good God used to destroy humanity are not unknown to us. His technology was very advanced. The staff that the Lord gave to Moses split the waters of the Red Sea in two. The ark stopped the waters of the Jordan and broke down the walls of the city of Jericho. Elijah's cloak split the waters of the Jordan. And Joshua's sword accelerated the movement troops of the Israelites. In other words, it sped up time. From these descriptions, we could conclude the following. If for antiquity these were miracles for us today, they are just an advanced technology much more than what we have today. The Lord and his angels are very human. They fly as we fly. They have powerful weapons of destruction as we unfortunately have. They speak through sophisticated devices as we do. And for this reason, we cannot call them spirits. Kidnappings are nothing more than a flight trip above the earth or in space. The destruction of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah is not a punishment for the behavior of the people, but a real war between the gods that involved the poor people in its midst. As the lost weapons of the Anunnaki gods draws to a close, we find ourselves at the end of an astonishing journey through the depths of human history, rediscovering forgotten links between divine technology and the most ancient sacred texts. This documentary not only lifted the curtain on hidden truths, but also challenged us to look beyond what we thought possible, questioning the limits of our knowledge. Together we explored how the advanced technology of the Anunnaki gods, described in the Bible under the guise of miracles, could actually be testimony to a superior civilization that influenced the course of human history. From spaceships that traversed the ancient skies to weapons of unimaginable power, we discovered how these lost technologies could be the key to understanding our spiritual and technological evolution. Now, standing at the crossroads, we ask ourselves, what other mysteries await us to be discovered? How will this new perspective on the past change the way we see our future? The lost weapons of the Anunnaki gods is just the beginning of a new era of exploration and discovery where science and spirituality meet to reveal deeper truths about our world and our place in the cosmos. Thank you for joining us on this journey and we encourage you to keep looking, asking, and exploring. Let us never forget that human history is full of enigmas and that sometimes the answers we seek lie hidden in the starlight, waiting to be rediscovered. The lost weapons of the Anunnaki gods gave us a window into a fabulous past and reminded us that the adventure of knowledge is far from over. Keep asking, exploring, and discovering, as each answer you find brings us closer to the true story of our origin. Until our next journey into the unknown, stay curious and open to the infinite possibilities of the universe.